In different countries and eras of the Middle Ages, there were different traditions and fashions for shaving women's bodies. In general, we can say that shaving was common in some cultures, especially those where religious influence was strong, while in other cultures it was not obligatory or even undesirable. For example, in Byzantium, where the Orthodox Church forbade shaving, women kept their long hair and did not shave their body hair. In Egypt, where Islam was widespread, women shaved their armpits in intimate areas as a hygienic and religious rite. In the Middle Ages, several medical treatises mentioned hair removal. Henry de Mondeville, a famous physician of the early 14th century, described several methods of hair removal, such as the use of tweezers, small scissors, or depilatory creams. He also gives several recipes for these same depilatory creams, including one made from bat's blood and another from quicklime and chili peppers. Interestingly, Mondeville attributes the second recipe to the physician Avicenna, whose real name was Ibn Sina. Avicenna was an Andalusian physician, and his works on medicine were the most popular in the Middle Ages. So we can say that the idea of hair removal came from the East, from the Arab world. This idea is not only present in Mondeville's vision, but is also confirmed in other texts. One such text is the autobiography of Osama Ibn Munkid, a Syrian emir who lived in the East in the 12th century and maintained close relations with the Franks of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. In this excellent autobiography, he tells an amusing anecdote. A Frankish knight entered a hammam and saw that a Muslim hammam worker was completely shaved. The knight exclaimed, How marvelous! Do the same for me. Impressed by the result, he hurried home, brought his wife, and asked the barber to do the same for her. For Osama ibn Munkid, the main point was to mock the Franks, who were portrayed as dirty, unfamiliar with the customs of the hammam, and insufficiently modest. The knight does not hesitate to display his wife in front of the hammam worker. Whether apocryphal or true, the anecdote emphasizes a certain Western interest in Eastern depilation practices. In the Middle Ages, hair was also a symbol of strength. The kings of the Merovingian dynasty even put hair in their seals. Hair became a symbol of virility and fertility. It is also a symbol of adulthood. Even under the Merovingians, a boy became a man when he shaved for the first time. In the 16th century, Native Americans were called children because they were beardless, which justified their exploitation. It was a terrible time. Throughout history, fashions have changed. In the past, Having hair was considered a sign of masculinity, while not having hair was considered a feminine trait. As a result of this view, it became accepted that women should be hairless. However, fashions changed over time. For example, in the 11th and 12th centuries, it was considered fashionable to be completely shaven, but in the 14th century, beards became popular again. An interesting example from history is when Richard the Lionheart shaved the beards of Cypriot nobles. He probably did this to humiliate the Greek nobility. In fact, the island's ruler, Isaac Comnenus, was furious when he learned of the fate of his barons. But the forced shaving also symbolized the island's transition to Latin rule. The smooth skin of the Greeks signaled their political allegiance. Chronicles of the time noted, the king shaved off his long and thick beards to show that they had changed masters. Now back to women. In Western Europe, where the Catholic Church did not forbid shaving, women could choose whether or not to shave, depending on fashion, personal preference, and social status. In the 12th and 13th centuries, it became popular to shave the eyebrows and forehead to create the illusion of a higher hairline. Although the Church forbade women to shave their forehead hair, it could not prove its point. It believed that the removal of hair was against the divine will, since it believed that God wanted us to be hairy. Despite the church's prohibition, women continued to shave their foreheads and necks and to tweak their eyebrows. Their actions were driven by a desire to please men. In addition, a girl with hair that resembled Titian's color blonde and with white, well-groomed skin was considered beautiful. Good skin meant not only the absence of pimples, but also the absence of excess vegetation. As a result, many women, especially those of the upper classes, resorted to removing unwanted hair for example, forehead hair was removed with a mixture containing lye, but this method could cause burns. Elizabeth Tudor is known to have used a rattling lime mixture to remove hair from her forehead. 
In the Middle Ages, courtesans sometimes went even further and shaved their private parts. Such a statue was placed on the reconstructed Tosa Gate in Milan. Historical records show that this gate was attacked by Frederick I. Barbarossa, who sacked the city. There are two versions of what the statue represents, either a young courtesan who stopped the attack of Frederick's army by shaving her pubic hair in front of everyone, or Frederick's wife who acted as a courtesan. During the Renaissance period in Europe, it was believed that courtesans had to have smooth private parts to avoid lice problems. This may seem ridiculous. Local customs should also be considered, especially in Southern Europe where Eastern hair removal methods such as threading and waxing are common. Smooth skin on certain parts of the body was considered a symbol of youth for women, allowing them to attract the attention of younger sweethearts or husbands. In addition, men also favored this appearance, considering it more youthful and vibrant. One recipe says to get rid of hair permanently, mix in eggs, red arsenic or an ivy juice with vinegar and apply to the skin. In the Middle Ages, there were several ways to remove hair. Hair could be removed with a pumice stone, a razor, or wax. However, the most effective but expensive method was to remove hair with hot sugar. There were also methods of hair removal using thread or resin, as mentioned above. In the 14th and 15th centuries, some women began to shave their armpits and legs to look more attractive in open clothing. In the 13th century, the first hair removal device, the hand razor, appeared. It consisted of a sharp blade attached to a wooden or metal handle. Using a razor, however, required great skill and was a rather complicated process. Not all women followed these fashions, however, and many preferred to keep their body hair natural. In addition, shaving women was associated with debauchery and indecency, causing shock in society and condemnation from the church at the appearance of shaved legs or armpits. However, with the passage of time and changing social attitudes, attitudes towards shaving women changed and the practice became more common. Men's attitudes towards shaved or unshaved women varied by culture and time. In some cases, men preferred shaved women because they considered them more hygienic, attractive, and sexy. In other cases, men valued unshaven women as more natural, healthy, and fertile. In still other cases, men did not pay attention to women's shaving status and considered it an insignificant factor. Lastly, I'll give a couple more examples regarding the shaving of women in past eras. Pierre de Brantome wrote, for example, of a French lady that her hair in the intimate place was so long that she braided it, twisted it into ribbons, curled it, and tied it to her legs. Angelique, in the novel by Anne and Sergei Golan, was carefully prepared before the wedding, removed all the unwanted hairs. The famous poet and artist John Ruskin, although married to the beautiful Euphemia, never showed any physical interest in his wife. As a result, this beauty inevitably secured the dissolution of the marriage, and rumors began to circulate in English society that the cause lay in her dense vegetation below. Ruskin, perfecting his paintings, praised female beauty but was not ready for real intimacy with his spouse. The Victorian era was such that not all women shaved, and this caused problems in their relationships.